and down of the same. And he is worthy to be prayed. It's so wonderful and it is such a blessing to be in your presence today, gathered together in the house of the Lord. Amen. We're living in times now where it's just a blessing to see one another. Amen. It's a blessing to see that you're doing well and that the Lord is taking care of you and, and that he is providing for all of our needs. Watching over our family, he's watching yes. over our children. Amen. Amen. He's just taking care of us. Amen. And he's been better to us than what we deserve. Amen. And for that reason, for that reason, he is worthy to be praised. And so I want to say today, praise you the Lord. Amen. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbal. Praise him upon the high-sounding symbols. Let everything that hath breath yes, Lord. praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let's put our hands together and let us give. Let us do unto yes, Lord. his glorious name. We're going to have a selection. And then following our selection, we'll have our scripture reading and our prayer.
scripture reading I want to be coming from out of the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13. I want to notice verses 11 through 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verses 11 through 13. Going to be our scripture reading. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. But then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abide is faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. And at this time, let us be seated. Following this next selection, we'll go into the word of the Lord.
give God the praise for truly he has brought us a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. What a wonderful God we serve. I didn't pray right after the scripture reading, so I want to take the time to have prayer, and then I'll, we will go into our topic for this Sunday. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the privilege of being able to assemble in your house. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the privilege of being able to come together with our family to, to worship you today in spirit and in truth. We come to you today, O oh Father, because we recognize that we are, we are helpless without you. We recognize that all have sinned and have come short of your glory. We are thanking you today for the forgiveness of sin, which we experience by way of the blood that was shed for us on Calvary's cross. We come to you right now, O oh Lord, with humble hearts, knowing that we are not even worthy to call on your name. But because of your goodness and your mercy, you open the way to the throne of grace. So we're coming to you now, O oh Lord, on behalf of all of those that are in the hospital right now, rehabilit going through rehabilitation, those that are in nursing homes, we pray for your healing grace to those family members that are on our hearts that we love, that are dear to us, that are going through battles with their health right now. We pray for your healing grace and strength to endure these difficult times. We pray for those that are grieving now uh, as a result of the fact that, that those who have lost loved ones, family members, there are heavy hearts right now, and we pray that you will soothe those heavy hearts, that you will soften the blow. We know that you're able, O oh Lord, to provide for all of our needs. So whatever it is they need right now, encouragement, support, reconnecting with family, whatever it is, Lord, I pray that you will provide for their needs. There are those who are going through various hardships uh, in the time of this pandemic, but we know that there's nothing that's too far for you. So I pray, Heavenly Father, that whatever it is that they, that they need, we are believing on their behalf that you that you have promised that you will supply. And we pray for all your children right now to encourage our hearts. You would help us to look to you and to know that we're depending, depending on you for everything that we need. Bless us to this end, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our scripture for today is going to be found book of Joel, the book of Joel, Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2 is where we are going to be going, Notice what it tells us here in Joel chapter 2, verses 25 through 27. That's Joel chapter 2, verses 25 through 27. We hope that you're there. Joel 2, verses 25 through 27. It says, And I will. Restore to you the years 
the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat, I'm in verse 26 now, and ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord, your God, that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord, your God, and none else, that my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. 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 Our subject matter today is entitled No Wasted Years. No Wasted Years. Many are looking at 2020 as a wasted year. But I'm here to tell you today that when it comes to our God, there is no wasted year. If we are in the hand of God, and we believe that he holds our future in his hands, there's no such thing as a wasted year. Yes, uh, to, say, to suggest that 2020 is a wasted year is to somehow uh, conclude that God did not know what 2020 was going to bring. But let me tell you, God knew all about 2020 before you were even born. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is God that has brought you into the kingdom for such a time as this. So what is it that the Bible is speaking about here in the book of Joel concerning uh, the caterpillar and the the cake of worm and, and the locusts and, 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 the, and the fact that, that these agricultural pests have eaten up a bountiful harvest. Let me explain. We read here in the book of Joel where God's children suffered complete devastation and destruction of their harvest for over a period of four long years. Their crops had come under attack by a relentless and determined foe, not a human army, but a pestilence, a, a, an army of insects which mercilessly swarmed down and thoughtlessly chewed up the entire crop. But the Bible tells us that God promised that he would restore all that was lost. Now notice he said there in Joel, he said, I have sent this army. I want you to know today that sometimes, sometimes, because we know that God is in control, sometimes diseases, pestilences, are sent as a result of man's disobedience. And, and God allows it to happen so that man will recognize that there's no cure and there's no solution but through him. Uh, so that man would humble himself in the sight of God and recognize and be accountable to the truth and the living God. Mm -hmm. And so because they were so disobedient, the entire population was helpless against these invading insects, 
chewing at their crops. They came in by the millions, millions of gigantic grasshoppers, which dove down into their precious farmland. The land which they which they tilled and plowed with backbreaking labor that they cultivated for an entire year. Can you imagine it? Everything that they had labored for. But I want you to know they didn't have uh, uh, what they call it farmer's insurance. If it was gone, it was gone. Uh, and there was nothing that anybody could do about it. Everything that they had labored for had vanished in an instant before their very eyes. Everything that they had accomplished in this year had gone up, eaten up by these insects which had no respect or regard for their backbreaking labor. And I want you to know that the entire economy had been brought to its knees as a result of, of these invading insects. And, and, that, so, and, so, and so as we look at this scenario, many were saying to themselves that, that this year had been wasted. Because the insects had devoured all of their wheat and all of their grain. And one thing about years, one thing about months and weeks and the time that we have. You see, dollars can be restored. Property can be restored. Photographs that have been ruined often can be restored. Marriages that have been broken can be restored. Machinery, automobiles, trucks can be restored. Ancient buildings and artifacts can be restored. But one thing that it, it is impossible to restore, and that is time. But the good news that we have today is that God is able to do the impossible. I said we serve a God that is able to do the impossible. Yes. And you're saying today, well, well what do you mean that, that God can restore time? Are we going to get in a time machine and, and go back and, and relive and relive the past? I mean, you know, God doesn't need a time machine. Because he holds the future in his hands. He's already working it out in our future. And he's working behind the scenes in our present, taking care of business in ways that we cannot imagine. God specializes in bringing long-term gain out of short-term loss. I'm going to repeat that again. The God that we serve specializes and bringing what? Long term gain out of short term loss. The children of Israel suffered for four long years. Mm -hmm. This pandemic has been around for seven months. Only seven months, and many have, have, have given in to hopelessness as if it were these seven months is the end of the world. Mm. But I want you to know that, that everything that we're going through right now is just a short-term loss. But God is able, if we get in line with him, God is able, if we would just examine ourselves, God is able, if we just ask the question, Lord, what will you have me to do? God is able, and not only is he able, but he will give you long-term prosperity and success, and he will bring it about, not only in spite of your
the church church trend lost, but because of what you experienced during your church short term loss. Because he's a God that is able to do the impossible. I said that he is a God that is able to do the impossible. And so you may look back on your life and you may look at all the experiences you've had and you may look at your life and you're looking at everything that's been wasted. Not just 2020, but you reflect upon everything that you feel like you've wasted. Time that you have invested. Time that you have invested in your career only to find out that it's not what you thought it would be. And you feel like the time you've invested in it has been a waste. You may have invested in a marriage in the past. And that marriage came to an end. And you, and you are living in regret because you wasted your time investing in somebody. And it turned out, it turned out, to all appearances, that it was not to your benefit. Time invested in your children. Mm -hmm. 18 long years. And it, it, it is seen that when they get of age, they decide to turn the other way. And it appears as if your, your time has been a waste. I say it appears that your time has been a waste. And you see, appearances are, 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 are often a result of our inability to see with the eyes of faith. When we look with the eyes of faith, we don't think about the time that was wasted. We think about how God was working behind the scene to develop us and to make us into what we are today. Time invested in helping others that did not appreciate or show any gratitude for all the help and all the time that you invested. And everything you poured into them, they just threw it away. As if it didn't mean anything. And so it appears that it's all, it all was for a waste. It all just went to waste. You may imagine that your year has been wasted. But I want you to know that God is doing supernatural things that you cannot see with a natural eye. You look with the natural eye, it is not obvious what God is doing. But when you look with the eye of faith, you begin to recognize that God is preparing you, that God is shaping you, that God is molding you, that God is equipping you for a better and a greater future that he has in store for you. Your responsibility is not to, 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 to just uh, become so absorbed and consumed by wasted years, but, but continue to believe and have hope that he is able not only to turn it around, but to multiply whatever he needs to multiply to grant unto you not only what you need, but more than what you imagine. God is in the business of restoring our lost and stolen years. You're eating up years. Just like those insects were eating up all their crops. God is in the business of restoring your lost, your stolen, your eaten up years, your devoured years, your gnawed at years, in the end, I want you to know that everything 
that was eaten up, gnawed at, chewed up, that God is able to restore. How does God restore? How can God restore if we can't get in a time machine and go back to the past? How can God restore our wasted years, our lost years? How is He able to do such a thing? God can restore your years. Get this now. By multiplying your fruitfulness and exceeding your expectations in the years to come. What am I saying? In other words, what you think that you have lost in one year, God is able to make up what you think you lost in one year He's able to make it up in a day. Yes, sir. And he's able not only to make it up, but he's able to multiply it beyond yes, your expectations. Yes, for there is nothing that is too hard for our God. Yes, and so in the same way that these insects, these grasshoppers had invaded and had eaten up all of these crops. An enemy has invaded our world. Yes, I want you to know I'm talking about spiritual wickedness in high places. He not only invaded our world, but an enemy has invaded our government. This enemy has invaded our homes. And this enemy has invaded so many minds. But I want you to know today that we serve a God that is able to restore. Everything that the enemy has invaded. God says that, he says that I will restore the years that have been stolen. I want you to know the things that the enemy steals are things that we can't see with the physical eye. The things that he's stolen are invisible, but they are very real. And so as a result of his ability to steal, to kill and destroy, he has stolen not only our years, but in the midst of stealing our years, He's stolen the courage of many. In the midst of stealing our years, he's stolen the peace of mind that God wants us to have and the hope that we should have in him. <coughs> he has stolen our freedom, our freedom to exercise our God-given ability for his name, honor, and glory. And, 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 has, and he has imprisoned so many that their years have been stolen because they have been chained down by, by negative thinking. They've been chained down by all the hurts that they've experienced in the past. They have been chained down by all of the, the negative words and hurtful words that they have received. They've been chained down because they, they reflect so much on all the wrongs that they have done and all the sins that they committed by recognizing that they have been forgiven by the grace of God and they've been chained down. As a result, their years have been stolen. And so, in the same way that years have been stolen, in the midst of those years, joy has been stolen. The enthusiasm to do good for others and the limited hand of helpfulness, the enthusiasm has been stolen. Dreams have been stolen. Many have had their childhood stolen. And let me tell you something.
something. You may be somebody. You may be saying, well, my childhood was stolen. How can I get that back? Let me tell you something. God is able to give you more laughter and more joy in your adulthood than you could have ever experienced in your childhood. He is able to restore what was lost. Let me tell you something. Everything around you, may, you may look at it and say it's dead. It's chewed up. It's devoured. It's gone to the depths. There's no way that it can be replaced. But I want you to know that we serve a God. He is the God that is able to recover. He's able to recover everything that has ever been lost. I want to let you know that although the enemy has invaded and has devoured so much of our time and so much of our energy, and we recognize and examine ourselves and recognize what it is that the Lord wants us to do. And if we would just simply humble ourselves and submission unto our God, he promised us that he will restore. Amen. There was a town way down in Alabama. This was many years, many years back in the past. There was an area that was well known for its massive cotton fields. It was a time when King Cotton was sitting on the throne. And that entire, that entire village, their survival was centered around the planting and the harvesting of cotton. King Cotton was the foundation. The foundation for how they raised their children and their families. The entire economy was directly associated with producing an abundant and a fruitful harvest of old King Cotton. King Cotton was the engine. It was the engine of prosperity and was the driving power of every business and all of the investments that were made in that community. But little did they realize that a calamity was on the horizon. And little did they realize that catastrophe was on the horizon. And all men was gathered and was preparing for a massive invasion. What was that army? And what was that massive invasion? It was an invasion of an insect that was scientifically identified as old boll weevil. And boll weevil migrated together. And they decided to launch an invasion. This insect, called boll weevil, launched an invasion into their little hamlet. And boll weevil wreaked havoc. It wreaked havoc upon that village. The villagers had labor. They labored in that particular land. They labor with such extreme exhaustion that their fingers were worn down to the very bone. They labored for an entire year. And some would say, uh, from can't see to can't see. Uh, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, they labored in that field. 
and they expected a bountiful harvest at the end of that agricultural season. But suddenly and unexpectedly, Bull Weevil had taken flight. Bull Weevil invaded the area. And Bull Weevil got to chewing. Bull Weevil got to crunching. And Bull Weevil got to munching. And Bo Weevil got to chewing, chewing up the entire harvest, chewing up the entire year of labor, chewing up what was going to provide for their food and provide for their clothing and their shelter, chewing up everything that they had worked for, and, and chewing up everything that's going to, going to provide for the oil to heat their homes for the winter. There was a disaster that they had never seen. They were helpless, helpless to do anything about it. But the notion came to the farmers. The farmers in this Alabama town, the notion had come to them that since their harvest had been completely eradicated, that they may as well go on ahead and see if they could plant some other kind of crop. Some crop that would not go the way of the bow weevil. And so they went on ahead and planted them some corn. Mm. And they planted them some other crops where the cotton had once been planted. And as a direct result of the planting of the peanuts and the planting of the other crops in the Alabama fields, they discovered that the peanuts began to flourish. And they discovered that the other crops had multiplied at an astronomical rate at a rate that they had never seen before. And as a result of this disaster and their reaction and response to this disaster, they developed new skills and they developed new ideas and they developed agricultural expertise as a direct result of this disaster, as a direct result of old Bo Weevil. And so if you go down to Alabama today, if you go down to this very town, you will find a statue, a statue not of a soldier, but a statue of this invading insect, a tribute to old Bo Weevil. And, and, and on this statue are engraved words of gratitude. Gratitude to the bow weevil. Because if it had not been for bow weevil, they would not have made these agricultural discoveries. And they would not have prospered as they had prospered. And so what I'm trying to tell you today, that the God that we serve, it's the same God who multiplied the, the two loaves and the two fishes. The five loaves and the two fishes. He's able to multiply your years. He's able to multiply your productiveness and your fruitfulness in the years to come. He's able to multiply them beyond your expectation. So don't you ever be discouraged. For he says, I am the God of restoration. Don't you ever be discouraged. For I'm the God of miraculous recovery. Don't you ever give in to hopelessness. For I'm the God of the extreme makeover. Don't you ever lose your grip. Worrying about the wasted years. For I am the Alpha. The Alpha and the Omega. I'm 
the beginning and the ending. I am the God. I'm the God who controls the future, the future and the past. So don't you ever lose your courage, for I am the God of the resurrection. Our heavenly Father raised up Jesus, raised him up from the tomb. And he says, I am the resurrection, the resurrection and the life. I am he who was dead, and I'm alive forevermore. So don't you ever get discouraged worrying about some wasted year. For God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask the thing, according to the power, the power that worketh in us. I am the God of restoration. I'm the God a miraculous recovery. And so if you go ahead on and just get in line with God, if you would just go on ahead and just examine yourself, if you would just go on ahead and say, Lord, what would you have me to do? I'm here to tell you today that he will recover all. He will recover all. And he will do it in the way that he sees fit. He will do it in his own time. And he will do it in a manner of his own choosing. All you need to do is just humble yourself in the eyes of the Lord. And he shall exalt you. He shall exalt you in due season. So go on ahead and just get in line with our God. You're here today you've heard this word. And I'm here to tell you to those who are saying to themselves how can I change my life? Mm -hmm. How can I change the direction that I'm going in? How can I break these habits that are holding me down? I want you to know that we have a Savior. Yes, sir. And his name is Jesus. He's the Son, the Son of the living God. He was sent down into this world. And, and he paid the price for our sins. He paid it on the cross of Calvary. He died on that old ragged cross. He was buried in the grave. And he said, I will arise in three days. And he rose up on the third day, exactly as he said he would. And he lives and he reigns forevermore. And he said that if you would just simply confess that he is your Lord, if you would just simply confess that he's your master. If you would just give him your sins, that he will forgive you, he will restore you, he will save you, he will wipe your slate clean, and he will prepare a home for you in heaven. And the question is, will you make that decision for the Lord today? I trust and I hope that you will make the decision. At this time, we're going to have a selection. And I want you to think about making that decision for the Lord Jesus Christ.
His blood is symbolized by the wine. And he says that this wine symbolizes my blood that was shed for you for the remission of sins that night before he was crucified. And he says, let us drink together. Amen, amen. His blood, his blood will never Lose. I don't care how times have changed. I don't care how people have changed. I don't care about the kind of world we live in. His blood shall never lose. If you're watching by way of Facebook Live, we thank you so much for joining us. We'll be here until 1:15. Separately or privately, I uh, will be here for you as well. If you want to bring an offering, you can also do that as well. Thank God for each one of you. Let us continue to keep one another in our prayers. Let us pray for one another. As the Lord would have us to do. Let's stand together.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit here today. We pray that as we leave this place that you would dismiss us with your grace and mercy. 